Hey everyone, I'm going to show you how to customize your sound rig. Uh, we will adjust some of the lines or we'll go ahead and also upload a whole new template. Um, kind of give you guys the idea how to do this on your end so that, that way you can uh, be as creative as possible with your sound rig. Now before we begin, there are a few things that you will need to download. The first thing, if you go to this page, I will go ahead and leave the web address in the description down below. The first thing that you'll need to download is the compressed 16 megabyte image. This guy right here, not the two, but the 16. Every sound rig that we make comes with the 16 megabyte um, capacity. So go ahead and download that. And then also, if you are on a PC, um, you will need the Win32 Disk Imager. Uh, again, this is for PC only. If you are on a Mac, which I am, you do not need this. Uh, there's already a built-in application that comes with the OS. So once you have those downloaded, uh, we can begin. So the first thing that we can do is let's go ahead and plug in our soundboard. Now that our soundboard is plugged in, you will see in our devices that the Adafruit SFX is available. To click on, we'll go ahead and open it, and you will see a bunch of files in there. Now, what I recommend doing before we start anything is to create a folder on your desktop. Let's go ahead and label it backup. And this is just in case we mess up or screw up. And we can go back to our starting point. We'll go ahead and select everything and drag and drop all of it to our desktop. Now that that's complete, I will go over the naming conventions of the sound rig and basically how everything is labeled and what kind of functions you can allow your rig to do. Uh, we'll go ahead and close out of the Adafruit window just for now and just look at our backup. Okay, so we have our backup here and we decided, let's say we want to make some changes to our backup. Um, what you could do is duplicate it and this will be our new folder. There we go. We have our new folder. So it's just, again, it's a copy of the backup. We don't want to mess with anything in the backup because, again, you want to fall back to our original state if possible. So we have all the files here. And um, I'll go ahead and start with, so with the naming conventions, there are a few different options we can use. So with, with uh, all the triggers, the first thing you'll see is the letter T, which stands for trigger and then a number following suit. So T01, T02, T03, etc. And that is the label of your trigger. So T01 is trigger one. And if you have the strap on your hand, on your left hand, it is the furthest most left button that you would click with your pointer finger, uh, the button closest to you. That'd be trigger one. Um, and then the next thing is we have a word here and that word is next. And essentially what that allows us to do is cycle through our lines. So trigger one, next, and then the number zero. We always start with zero and the number goes all the way up to nine. Uh, so at most you can have 10 lines to cycle through. If you decide, well, I don't want to cycle through my lines and I just rather have them random. I just want rand I want them to come out randomly. I, I don't want to cycle. Well, that's a very quick fix. Uh, you just need to change the word in here to R A N D for random, like so. And it's going to drop down here, but you're going to need to do that for all these, like so. And then, uh, let's see.
Sorry. There we go. So now, instead of these triggers playing through a cycle, they will play randomly. Now, again, you do need to have the files numbered zero through nine. That way, the device knows which random number to choose from. The third option that we can use is which is called a latch trigger. And that allows us to have one file for the trigger, so we will no longer have these numbers here. And essentially what that does is, so let's say you're Darth Vader and you want to have the Imperial March on your sound rig. Uh, with the latch, so let's pretend, well let's get rid of these, and let's pretend this is the Imperial March file. We would name this T01 latch. And when you hit the button, it starts the music. You can let go of the of the button. It will keep playing, and it will even loop until it will keep playing until you hit the button again, and then it will stop. So it's like an on-off switch. The last option is the hold. So T01 hold, and um, instead of hitting it, letting it go, and playing, and hitting again to stop, once you hold it, it will play the file until you let go, and then it will stop. And those are the four options that we can use with uh, the Adafruit board that we have here. Again, we have triggers one, two, three, four, all the way down to eight. And I just wanna let you guys know that the files that the rig takes is a .ogg or .og or .wave file. Only those two files. It doesn't take MP3. It doesn't take any other audio format. It has to be a .og or .wav file. I highly recommend using a .og because it's a compressed file and it will allow you to have more files on the rig. Another important step is make sure that whatever changes you're going to make, that you do it off the rig. So we're creating a clean folder here that we're going to transfer to the rig. We don't want to make changes on the rig because it gets really weird and you know how electronics get, it gets buggy. So whenever we make changes, we wipe the soundboard clean and transfer our new files onto the board. All right, so let's say we're happy with this, great. And let's take a look at our board. So. Our board's plugged in, the Adafruit SFX is in there. Here are all our files. And we wanna go ahead and clean this out because we wanna transfer our new folder with all our new files that we want in here. So how do we do that? Well, if you're on a Mac, you are going to use disk utility. And if you were on PC, this is when I was talking about the Win32 Disk Imager. This is the program that you want open now. Uh, the programs are pretty much identical. Um, the only difference is, I believe, um, on the PC it says Image instead of Restore up here, and that's what you're going to want to click. So make sure that you have the board selected, not, not your hard drive. You don't want to wipe your hard drive clean it's very important that you have this highlighted. You wanna go ahead and hit restore. Actually, let me pull this to the side so you guys can see this in action. Uh, so you wanna go ahead and hit restore. And we wanna restore from, if you hit image, this is the file that I had you download earlier, the 16 megabyte image. I saved it to my desktop. Wherever you saved it, go ahead and select it and hit open. Always double check that you would like to restore the Adafruit SFX board, not your hard drive. I don't want to be held responsible for you cleaning out your computer. Um, and yeah, just make sure that that's selected and then uh, you just hit restore. It will go through. It should just take a few seconds. Verifying and done. Perfect. Awesome. So 
So if we open our finder, go back to our uh, board here, we will see that everything is clean, all gone, except for this file, which uh, just lets you know that uh, you did a clean reset. This is just a test file. Um, we will go ahead and delete that in just a minute. But that's it. You just restored your board back to its original state. We can go ahead and X out of this application, this utility. And um, so we had our new folder here with our changes that we wanted. Now we can either drag and drop all these files over here, or if uh, you purchase multiple templates, like for instance, let's say I had Darth Vader here earlier, and I had a Kylo template that I want, I can select all these and drag and drop them into the, uh, to the soundboard. And um, again, if you're going to make changes, make changes on this end, on, on your desktop. Make the changes there. Don't change the wording or the numbers or the order when they're, in, when they're inside the board. Because I've done that before and sometimes they delete, sometimes they don't, and it gets really messy. Oh, speaking of applications, I recommend Audacity. If you guys are thinking about adding new files, uh, this is a free software. Um, it works for both Mac and PC. Uh, let's say you have a breathing loop or you have some sort of movie quote or you made your own file, place that MP3 in here and then make sure that you can convert it to that OGG format. Again, you wanna make sure it's OGG. I don't recommend WAV because the file size is too large. Um, .ogg is compressed. And that's about it, folks. I mean, let's see. Just to show you, like, for instance, all these files here. I mean, this is 7.8 megabytes. At max, you have 16. Uh, to work with and these are a lot of lines that are in here um, So I, I wouldn't worry too much about oh do I have enough space? Uh, again at max you can have 80 lines. That's if you cycle 10 lines per trigger and I believe I covered everything I think so and if not, I'm sorry <laughs> I may make an updated video who knows but again, thank you so much for your interest in the MyCom. Uh, this is such a fun device to use and definitely enhances your costume um, to be even more accurate. So until the next one, I'll catch you around.